bats, snakes, and pangolins. Wild animals like these are believed to be the source of the coronavirus pandemic. Coronavirus cases, the growing coronavirus outbreak. Researchers say it stemmed from this wet market in Wuhan, China. Images of the market from early December, taken by a concerned customer, indicate it was apparently selling other live wild animals, including skinned birds, snakes, and raccoon dogs. And now that the virus has become a worldwide pandemic. We're hearing this question a lot: Why do Chinese people eat everything? Do Chinese people eat everything? I think that really depends on who you're talking to. This is Why Chinese, a series where we're debunking common stereotypes about Chinese people, one Google search at a time. There's a saying in Chinese: "Bei ji xiang tian, ren suo shi." It means that if something's back is facing the sky, it's for people to eat. And what might not seem like food to you could be a delicacy to the Chinese. 吃什么和不吃什么，它完全是个文化意义的东西。就是在我这个文化里面，我吃这些东西，我觉得很正常。你那些东西，我就觉得很奇怪。So we got some non-Chinese people to try some common Chinese dishes. Ah,、oh, sweet baby Jesus. Okay, is is it is it snake soup? Oh, it is snake soup. I mean, I just figured adventurous. Like, <laughs> all right, well, I'm gonna try some snake then. Not bad. Not sure if I eat it again because it's kind of scary eating snakes. I would say like, like, I don't know, <laughs> an egg you would find in your attic, like a nice, like musty, like ancient, like, like an egg your grandmother bequeathed to you. Sort of a. If you had like a wet sock that's dirty and it's been sitting in your laundry basket for a week, that's what it smells like. I know it's gonna be something weird. This is made from a turtle shell. Really? Does the turtle stay alive after we take the shell? <laughs> that's a no. I'm eating a murdered turtle right now. To a person who's not familiar with Chinese cuisine, it might seem like the Chinese palate knows no bounds. So why do Chinese people seem to eat so many more types of meat than the rest of the world? Here are some reasons. So our cultural environment, our cultural tradition, and our religious belief. Number one, geography. China is a vast and geographically diverse country. It has nearly 10% of all plant species and 14% of animal species on Earth. 我们从东边的太平洋一直到西边的喜马拉雅山、青藏高原，所以它本身的这种地理环境的变化非常之丰富，所以就多了很多很多各种各样的食物。它在一个资源非常丰富的地方，有各种各样呃动物和植物在。山上有动物，呃，森林里有植物，完了有河，有海，有各种各样的东西。在的话，你说他会不吃吗 ？This has resulted in very different diets across different parts of the country. If you're, you know, talking to your average city person in Shanghai or Beijing or Chengdu, you know, chances are they're very similar to, say, like an American. They'll only eat pork. Um, beef and chicken,、um, but if you go into more rural places, they will probably eat more adventurous things. The province of Sichuan consumes the most、uh, rabbit in the country, and rabbit head is a delicacy.、Um, there's not much meat to it, but people like it for the texture. Number two, traditional Chinese medicine. Many plants and animals end up being used in traditional Chinese medicine. 药食同源，就中国人觉得。吃东西跟药是一个东西，是药食同源的，所以这个也决定了中国人吃东西就吃的很多，各种各样都吃。因为有些东西对你来说是很奇怪，对中国人才来说就是药。Here are a few examples. Bear bile is used to treat liver and gallbladder conditions. Bat meat is good for asthma. Donkey hide or ujiao is believed to improve blood circulation and treat conditions like anemia. Texts on traditional Chinese medicine identify more than 1,500 animal species that can be used for medicinal purposes. Another reason is religion. 90% of Chinese people consider themselves irreligious, 
and don't have the kind of food taboos you might find in faiths like Judaism and Islam. On top of these three reasons, just a few decades ago, one big law really shaped China's wildlife industry. In 1988, the Wildlife Protection Law encouraged the domestication and breeding of wildlife for various purposes, including for food. About 30 years later, in 2016, the government limited wildlife breeding to only scientific research and preservation. But by then, the wildlife farming industry was already booming, employing millions of people and feeding millions more. To this day, wild animals can still be found in wet markets and restaurants across China. But even though they might be available, only a minority of people are consuming them. Less than 1% of people said they would still eat wild animals in a survey conducted this year by a wildlife conservation agency in China. Sure, Chinese people eat everything, but so do many other cultures around the world. Or once upon a time, everyone ate everything. It's just with industrialization and how we've domesticated a lot of farm animals that our protein choices have become more limited. So even though there are weird and bizarre dishes in Chinese cuisine, and the ingredients are more diverse than in most of the world, in their day-to-day -day lives, most Chinese people eat pretty much the same meats as most of the world. So why is there this global fascination with the weird fringes of Chinese cuisine? Accusations of Chinese people eating questionable meat date as far back as the time of Marco Polo, when he called Chinese people barbaric for eating snakes and dogs. It continued into the 19th century, when Chinese immigrants started moving to the United States. Their eating habits became yet another way to alienate them, and the stereotype continues to this day. I think just growing up and even bringing Chinese food to school, people were like, oh, that's gross. And I remember during show and tell during seventh grade, I, all I had to do was like, oh, my dad eats sea cucumber, and everyone was absolutely fascinated. Um, and the dog trope does come up every now and then, but um, I think growing up in California, people have tired of that joke. I think when people have these um, remarks about, oh, do you guys eat dog? I think it's just born out of ignorance and they know very little about China or have never been to China. So that's, you know, our job to educate them. <laughs>